Hi there. Welcome to day number 359. I'm glad, as always, that you've joined me, and you couldn't be doing anything more important. Today, God's Word has wonderful promises and pictures of the future, and also warnings. Today, we read Zechariah 8 and 9, Isaiah 62, and Revelation 16. Let's turn to Zechariah 8. I hope you've noticed Joshua, or his name could be pronounced Jeshua, the high priest. He was the one that Satan was not allowed to accuse. He was given clean clothes. He is a priest and was given a clean priestly turban. And the gem with seven facets, literally seven eyes, was set before him. He is a picture of the Messiah, who is called the Lord's righteous branch. Then in chapter 6 we read that he was given a crown, and in the NLT he was told, He will build the temple of the Lord. Then he will receive royal honor and will rule as king from his throne. He will also serve as priest from his throne, and there will be perfect harmony between his two roles. As far as a normal man can do so, he is a picture of Jesus. And Joshua is a variant of Jeshua, which is the same name the Greeks pronounce Yesu, which is where we get our pronunciation of Jesus. From our place in history, how easy it is to see what God was picturing. Zechariah 8 Heading The Lord Promises to Restore Jerusalem The Lord Almighty gave this message to Zechariah. I have longed to help Jerusalem because of my deep love for her people, a love which has made me angry with her enemies. I will return to Jerusalem, my holy city, and live there. It will be known as the faithful city, and the hill of the Lord Almighty will be called the sacred hill. Once again, old men and women, so old that they use canes when they walk, will be sitting in the city squares, and the streets will again be full of boys and girls playing. This may seem impossible to those of the nation who are now left, but it's not impossible for me. I will rescue my people from the lands where they have been taken, and will bring them back from east and west to live in Jerusalem. They will be my people, and I will be their God, ruling over them faithfully and justly. Have courage! You are now hearing the same words the prophet spoke at the time the foundation was being laid for rebuilding my temple. Before that time, no one could afford to hire either men or animals, and no one was safe from enemies. I turned people against one another, but now I am treating the survivors of this nation differently. They will plant their crops in peace, their vines will bear grapes, the earth will produce crops, and there will be plenty of rain. I will give all these blessings to the people of my nation who survive. People of Judah and Israel, in the past, foreigners have cursed one another by saying, May the same disasters fall on you that fell on Judah and Israel. But I will save you, and then those foreigners will say to one another, May you receive the same blessings that came to Judah and Israel. So have courage, and don't be afraid. The Lord Almighty says, When your ancestors made me angry, I planned disaster for them, and did not change my mind, but carried out my plans. But now I am planning to bless the people of Jerusalem and Judah, so don't be afraid. These are the things you should do. Speak the truth to one another. In the courts give real justice, the kind that brings peace. Do not plan ways of harming one another. Do not give false testimony under oath, 
I hate lying, injustice, and violence. The Lord Almighty gave this message to Zechariah. The fasts held in the fourth, fifth, seventh, and tenth months will become festivals of joy and gladness for the people of Judah. You must love truth and peace. The Lord Almighty says, The time is coming when people from many cities will come to Jerusalem. Those from one city will say to those from another, We are going to worship the Lord Almighty and pray for His blessing. Come with us. Many peoples and powerful nations will come to Jerusalem to worship the Lord Almighty and to pray for His blessing. In those days ten foreigners will come to one Jew and say, We want to share in your destiny, because we have heard that God is with you. Zechariah 9 Heading Judgment on Neighboring Nations Zechariah Speaks This is the Lord's message. He has decreed punishment for the land of Hadrach and for the city of Damascus. Not only the tribes of Israel, but also the capital of Syria belong to the Lord. Hamath, which borders on Hadrach, also belongs to him, and so do the cities of Tyre and Sidon with all their skill. Tyre has built fortifications for herself and has piled up so much silver and gold that it is as common as dirt. But the Lord will take away everything she has. He will throw her wealth into the sea, and the city will be burned to the ground. The city of Ashkelon will see this and be afraid. The city of Gaza will see it and suffer great pain. So will Ekron, and her hopes will be shattered. Gaza will lose her king, and Ashkelon will be left deserted. People of mixed race will live in Ashdod. The Lord says, I will humble all these proud Philistines. They will no longer eat meat with blood in it or other forbidden food. All the survivors will become part of my people and be like a clan in the tribe of Judah. Ekron will become part of my people as the Jebusites did. I will guard my land and keep armies from passing through it. I will not allow tyrants to oppress my people any more. I have seen how my people have suffered. Heading The Future King Rejoice, rejoice, people of Zion! Shout for joy, you people of Jerusalem! Look, your king is coming to you! He comes triumphant and victorious! but humble and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. The Lord says, I will remove the war chariots from Israel and take the horses from Jerusalem. The bows used in battle will be destroyed. Your king will make peace among the nations. He will rule from sea to sea from the Euphrates River to the ends of the earth. Heading The Restoration of God's People The Lord says, Because of my covenant with you that was sealed by the blood of sacrifices, I will set your people free, free from the waterless pit of exile. Return, you exiles who now have hope, return to your place of safety. Now I tell you that I will repay you twice over with blessing for all you have suffered. I will use Judah like a soldier's bow and Israel like the arrows. I will use the men of Zion like a sword to fight the men of Greece. Zechariah speaks. The Lord will appear above his people. He will shoot his arrows like lightning. The Sovereign Lord will sound the trumpet. He will march in the storms from the south. The Lord Almighty will protect His people, and they will destroy their enemies. They will shout in battle like drunk men, and will shed the blood of their enemies. 
It will flow like the blood of a sacrifice poured on the altar from a bowl. When that day comes, the Lord will save his people as a shepherd saves his flock from danger. They will shine in his land like the jewels of a crown. How good and beautiful the land will be. The young people will grow strong on its grain and wine. Let's turn to Isaiah 62. Yesterday we heard another important messianic section of Isaiah, the part that Jesus spoke in his hometown synagogue in Luke 4. And Jesus alluded to the same passage when he sent John the Baptist's disciples back to him in Luke 7. Isaiah 62 I will speak out to encourage Jerusalem. I will not be silent until she is saved and her victory shines like a torch in the night. Jerusalem, the nations will see you victorious. All their kings will see your glory. You will be called by a new name, a name given by the Lord himself. You will be like a beautiful crown for the Lord. No longer will you be called forsaken, or your land be called the deserted wife. Your new name will be God is pleased with her. Your land will be called happily married, because the Lord is pleased with you and will be like a husband to your land. Like a young man taking a virgin as his bride, he who formed you will marry you. As a groom is delighted with his bride, so your God will delight in you. On your walls, Jerusalem, I have placed sentries. They must never be silent, day or night. They must remind the Lord of his promises and never let him forget them. They must give him no rest until he restores Jerusalem and makes it a city the whole world praises. The Lord has made a solemn promise, and by his power he will carry it out. Your grain will no longer be food for your enemies, and foreigners will no longer drink your wine. But you that planted and harvested the grain will eat the bread and praise the Lord. You that tended and gathered the grapes will drink the wine in the courts of my temple. Isaiah speaks. People of Jerusalem, go out of the city and build a road for your returning people. Prepare a highway, clear it of stones. Put up a signal so that the nations can know that the Lord is announcing to all the earth. Tell the people of Jerusalem that the Lord is coming to save you, bringing with him the people he has rescued. You will be called God's holy people, the people the Lord has saved. Jerusalem will be called the city that God loves the city that God did not forsake. We turn now to Revelation 16. Note that we saw another view of the Crystal Sea in chapter 15, but this time it was mixed with fire. In chapter 4, it was clear as crystal. My theory is that the glassy sea is the same, but it changes appearance based on God's prevailing mood and the tenor of current events. Note that the 144,000, or all the people victorious over the beast, sang the Song of Moses. Note that with just that little hint... The victory over the forces of Satan is pictured as victory over the army of Egypt and release from bondage. The angels are dressed like Jesus in chapter 1. The plagues come from the interior of the heavenly sanctuary. We now turn from the interlude between the trumpets and the bowls. There is a difference here. 
you will see that before the plagues struck just a third of whatever object. Now they strike 100%. This is the end. Revelation chapter 16 Then I heard a loud voice speaking from the temple to the seven angels, Go and pour out the seven bowls of God's anger on the earth. The first angel went and poured out his bowl on the earth. Terrible and painful sores appeared on those who had the mark of the beast and on those who had worshipped its image. Then the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea. The water became like the blood of a dead person, and every living creature in the sea died. Then the third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and the springs of water, and they turned into blood. I heard the angel in charge of the waters say, The judgments you have made are just, O Holy One, you who are and who were. They poured out the blood of God's people and of the prophets, and so you have given them blood to drink. They're getting what they deserve. Then I heard a voice from the altar saying, Lord God Almighty, true and just indeed are your judgments. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and it was allowed to burn people with its fiery heat. They were burned by the fierce heat, and they cursed the name of God, who has authority over these plagues. But they would not turn from their sins and praise his greatness. Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast. Darkness fell over the beast's kingdom, and people bit their tongues because of their pain, and they cursed the God of heaven for their pains and sores but they did not turn from their evil ways. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great Euphrates River. The river dried up to provide a way for the kings who come from the east. Then I saw three unclean spirits that looked like frogs. They were coming out of the mouth of the dragon, the mouth of the beast, and the mouth of the false prophet. They are the spirits of demons that perform miracles. These three spirits go out to all the kings of the world to bring them together for the battle on the great day of Almighty God. The Christ speaks. Listen, I am coming like a thief. Happy is he who stays awake and guards his clothes so that he will not walk around naked and be ashamed in public. Then the spirits brought the kings together in the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl in the air. A loud voice came from the throne in the temple, saying, It is done! There were flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder and a terrible earthquake. There has never been such an earthquake since the creation of human beings. This was the worst earthquake of all. The great city was split into three parts, and the cities of all countries were destroyed. God remembered great Babylon and made her drink the wine from his cup, the wine of his furious anger. All the islands disappeared, all the mountains vanished. Huge hailstones, each weighing as much as a hundred pounds, fell from the sky on people who cursed God on account of the plague of hail because it was such a terrible plague. Please pray with me. Our Sovereign God and Everlasting Father, again and again you have repeated the words Zechariah recorded, I will rescue my people. I will bring them back from east and west to live in Jerusalem. 
They will be my people, and I will be their God. Isaiah prophesied that Jerusalem would be given a new name. He wrote your words when you promised. The Lord is announcing to all the earth, Tell the people of Jerusalem that the Lord is coming to save you, bringing with him the people he has rescued. You will be called God's holy people, the people the Lord has saved. Jerusalem will be called the city that God loves, the city that God did not forsake. Lord, after giving your Son to redeem and rescue a people and provide a way that they could be accepted as your holy people, it is rather unlikely that you would change your mind and say, It's okay, you can come to me by other doors. There are many ways to heaven. It doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're sincere. O oh Lord, help the people of this world to understand how much trouble you've gone to in order to teach the human race that there is only one who can rescue us, and his name is Jesus. There is only one way, and Jesus is that way, the truth and the life. Help us to tell people that it matters very much what we believe. Because, Lord, one way you show your glory is by never changing your mind. There will be a new Jerusalem, and those who are privileged to live there because of your grace. And there will be those who will experience the seven final plagues poured out upon them.